Mama said you've been walking. Where is this? Have you been walking? <laughs> you want the rice cake? It's chocolate. Oh, Lucky wants it. Oh, sorry. <gasps> That's pretty good. That was pretty good, big baby. Say bye. Bye, Mommy. Bye, Myla. I love you guys. I'll come back with a big old fish, okay? She said, yeah, whatever. I've heard that before. Good morning, you beautiful wieners. Welcome to East Texas. By the way, we're steady still filming the New Lake a Day challenge. And I figured what a better way to do it than to bring the family up here. Milo and Kaylee will be joining me on this East Texas end. And we're gonna be doing a little bit of puddle jumping, jumping from one small reservoir to the next. This one in particular, I've never been to. And if you're new to the channel, if you're new to this little series, the whole goal for the next couple days is to fish new lakes and new lakes only with zero intel. But I'm excited. This is gonna be a very fun little series. We're gonna start off by fishing the lake that we're staying on right now. If it's good, we might stick around. And if not, we're gonna jump to another East Texas puddle. There is water everywhere. With that, lies a lot of big bass. So stick with us, stay tuned. Let's have ourselves a day. See you later. Welcome to the lake. Conditions are, how do I put this? Very, oh wow, there's a giant bass right there. I'm just gonna start fishing. People just want to see me get some big fish, and that's about it. I'm going to try to do it today. We're going to see if we can pop them in the jowls today. Thankfully, I rigged up last night. Otherwise, I'd be freezing my wiener off trying to tie knot. It is so cold right now. It's 23 degrees this morning, all the way out in like southeast Texas. Like, what the hell is that all about? It's not been nice, not even the slightest bit. Winter is still here in Texas. Grande Recon, chartreuse blew back. Money! Money! I always pick like the shittiest days to go fishing. It is so cold. It's so windy. There we go. That was so quick. Literally first cast of the day. First cast of the day on a saucy swimmer. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's got to be bad luck, right? That's not good luck. Oh my gosh, look at this fish. He is so fat. This fish is so fat. Look at that bass. Legitimately first cast of the day. And I got like literally like a two pounder that's like 14 inches. This thing is so fat. That's a beautiful fish. Oh my gosh, that fish is gorgeous. Caught him on the 3.3 inch saucy swimmer. If you guys want to pick some saucy swimmers up, check the link down below. Use my code John B. Save 10% off your entire Guggen order. Wow. The sun is kind of harsh. I want you guys. To... Oh, there you go. I'll send you back. I'll put you back. Whew. That felt good. That's a big <laughs> He fucking sees it though. He sees it now. Good fish. Got him. Big and big and giant. 10 pounder. 10 pounder. Holy hell, that's a big yappy. Dude, I thought that was a bass. Holy dude, that might be my biggest crappie ever. That thing is huge. Holy balls, that's a big yop. Oh, he's got a giant freaking shad down his gullet too. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's a huge crappie. It's definitely one of my biggest white crappie ever. I'm gonna weigh this guy. That's a beast. That's a daggone beast, son. I'm out here looking for big old girthas in the main creek channel and saw this guy on the graph. I'm like, well, that's either a bass or a 10 pound crappie. Sure enough, it was a 10 pound crappie. Dude. What? 2.29? What's the lake record out here? 2.29 pound crop? This thing's two pounds. What's cool about Texas Parks and Wildlife is they have a write up for just about every one of these lakes here in this state. And uh, with that, you get to see some of the records out here, like the biggest bass, the biggest catfish. We'll have records for ridiculous things like the biggest Paku. Some lakes in far south Texas, there's been Paku that have been released through like fish tanks and, and stuff like that. And there's literally a state record Paku here in Texas. It's it's really crazy. I have terrible service right now, but let's see if it loads. White crappie is three pounds. Damn it. The biggest black crappie though is 1.8. No lake record, but that is literally my biggest crappie ever. That's actually insane, dude. I'm going to get a measurement on this guy. It'd be cool to get a little replica made of this crappie. Let's get a measurement real quick. Oh my gosh, dude. Almost a 16 inch crappie. 15 and a half inches. What a beaut. Thanks for playing, old girl. 
So that was fun. <laughs> BB crappie, let's go. <laughs> I thought it was like a three pound bass, the way it was sitting on that tree like that. I was like, oh, nice, a bass. That thing is huge. That thing is big, big. Good one. Good one. Oh, that's a big bass. Finally a big one. Finally a big one. Let's go, wieners. Oh, he's barely hooked. That's a good fish. That's the one we want. Woo wee! That's a healthy one. That's a healthy one. Don't come undone. I got her. I got her. Let's go, baby. <laughs> it's not a giant, giant, but it's a good one. Oh, he's been caught before, too. That's wild. Oh, this is why you fish in February. Because the bass are built like this. Gotta give them a little spank every now and then too. It's a good largemouth. Now we're talking. It's been a pretty slow start. I've been battling the wind all day, but fish like this will help a ton. I'm gonna get the big camera out and put this guy in the well for a split second. Oh, that feels good. Woo! That's what I needed, baby. I needed some love like that. Look at that fish. We finally got ourselves a nice East Texas bass. Day number one on our four day family fishing trip. And this is a good one. I'm gonna guess she goes high fives. It's been pretty slow. I've been fighting against the wind all day and now I'm fishing the dam. One of the most stereotypical spots you can fish on any lake, but it's a good place to start on a, you know, on a new lake if you've never fished a specific body of water before. Did my scale just die? Oh no, we're good. Five and a half pounds. Big, bodacious, beautiful largemouth. We'll take them. All right, old girl, time to send you back. Thank you for biting. Five and a half pounder. Nice way to start this trip. Not a Goliath, but dude, it's a good bite. Put it there, wieners. I'm back on it. We're back on it. Here we are. This is the spot that I'm fishing right now. It is the dam. I imagine a little bit later in the day, it'll be worth cranking a lot of this riprap, seeing as most of this lake is hardwood and, and mud bottom and sand bottom. Uh, but for now, the water's still pretty cool. It's just now 12 p.m. This thing is moving so quick. That's another big one. Uh, good fish. It's not big, but it's a good fish for sure. Look how fast he's moving. That's how you can tell it's a bass. Generally, bass will move so quick, especially this time of year. They got to keep their metabolism up. Hey, buddy. Where are you going? Come back here. He's facing the other way now. There we go. That was sick. Good one. Another good one. Not bad. Wow, these fish are built so thick. These fish are built so thick. And that's how we're doing it, folks. It's just that straightforward. Looking for shad, finding a couple big blobs under or above the shad. A lot of people think that bass will hang always below shad because it's an easy vantage point. They can just come up and grab a couple. But I've seen so many, so many largemouth that will sit like in the school shad. Like it's crazy. It's almost like they're so comfortable and they know that the shad have no chance that they'll just sit on top or right in the shad and they'll get crushed. Look at the freaking dimensions on these fish. This is the third bass we've caught today and they're just so fat and pudgy. Like they're not very long. Look at that little guy. We'll take him. Bass number three. Hell yeah. Shoo. There we go, got him. Oh, that's a good one. On the jerk bait. I don't know if it's big, but it freaking hammered it. Just took a blind cast where I saw some bait and this guy popped me. I don't think it's big, but it's a fish. Oh yeah, nice little busy. On the yerk bait. Probably the second biggest one of the day. Barely hooked. Barely hooked, but it is a bass. It is a bass, dude. We'll take him. We'll take him, we'll take him. Figure it out, figure it out, man. Slowly but surely. I think the key right now is just to fish anything that resembles a small shad. And you know, all white jerk bait does just that. Nice start to day number one. We'll take him. Beauty. See ya, Papa. See ya, Pee Pee. Let's go. There's 
fish out there. Whole pack of them. There's one right there. That's a good fish. Come on, baby. Find that jerk bait. Oh, I missed him. That's a big one right there. Damn. Oh, he's getting too close to me. He's swimming right at the freaking boat. Come on. Oh, he sees it. Oh, he's all over it. There he is. Ate it. That was so sick. That was so sick. I got a bad cast on that fish, but he followed me right to the boat. So I was able to sting him. Another nice one. Back to back on the jerk baits. Starting to figure him out. It's been a struggle learning a new lake like this, but at least we're getting bites. Oh, there we go. He was barely hooked and he just rehooked himself. Another decent little largemouth and a two pounder. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My boat looks like a freaking garage sale right now. I got a bunch of lures on the deck. That's a telltale sign of an angler that has no idea what they're doing, but I think we're starting to piece them together. Every fish we've caught today has just been picture perfect. Super green, super fat, super healthy. People have this big misconception that when you fish this time of year, it can be very tough and not rewarding. But dude, like my favorite time, my favorite periods to fish in Texas is like anywhere from December all the way to March. It's just that pre-spawn, early spawn bite can be so, so good. Point in case, I mean, I'm on a brand new lake, no intel at all, and we're slowly picking things up here. Let's go. Come on, crush it. There he is. Got him. Got him. Got him. That was so cool. I'm sure you guys saw that on my graph. But that fish was just... He was just hunting up top on the surface. Which is pretty nuts considering how cold it is. But it just goes to show that we really don't know that much about bass. Jump them. That was actually a good fish. I probably shouldn't have lost him. Anyway, you guys got to see that in real time. That fish was literally sitting right under the surface in 15 feet of water. With the air temp being like you know in the low 40s right now it's just incredible and not only was he doing that but he was hungry he was willing to eat that jerk bait pretty crazy stuff man slowly piece them together the jerk bait seems to be winning right now so we're gonna stick with it whoo that was intense it's hunting too He's over. oh i had him no it was a good fish big fish for sure pounder <laughs> that's a good fish not a giant but probably my second biggest of the day just barely sniffed that little jig boat flip ah decent but it's a quality fish nonetheless decent and it's tough it's like they kind of slowed down for me i was on a bit of a flurry is getting them on the jerk bait and they went back down to the bottom and they're not chasing as much that's a good bass that will take him. Nice, like, I don't know, close to three pounder. That's fun, man. That's what East Texas is all about. Numbers in healthy, quality fish. Crazy thing about that fish I just caught, too, is I actually I hooked him once and I missed him. And uh, I think a lot of people are under the impression it's like, oh, you sting a fish and he's not going to come back. But I've had so many instances where that's happened. Like, I'm looking at my graph. I'm looking at my graph. I'm watching that fish come up, chase my bait. He hits it. I hook him for a second and he comes off. What I do in that scenario is rather than just hitting the boat deck and start crying, is uh, I just keep looking at my graph. I keep following that fish and, and seeing where where that fish goes. You know, that's a scenario in which that fish got hooked a little bit. Didn't bother him, obviously. Uh, so I just followed him with my graph and he went right back down to the bottom. Glued to the bottom, threw my jig right over his head. Same exact lure, uh, just moments later. and. He committed. So fish, you know, they they can be smart. They can be tricky and difficult, but don't give them too much credit. And that's a perfect example. Like they have this hardwired instinct to kill, to eat. Like bass are some of the most aggressive fish out there, period. And you have to keep that in mind. Like I literally, you guys saw me miss that fish. I stayed on him. I was like, all right, I'm going to try to follow this fish. And he just went right back down to the bottom and came back and ate it again. You know, it's pretty, pretty cool stuff. This graph is really 
starting to bust some myths for sure i mean that that is a perfect example like as a kid i grew up thinking you miss a fish that's your shot like that's your last and only shot whereas that's really just not the, not the truth man that ain't the truth anyway it's my little two cents this is actually a technique that i obviously did not coin my buddy josh jones has been pretty much tearing up the bass fishing world on a technique just like this and you know don't get it twisted you could you could fish a really super subtle hair jig or a swim jig in dirty water like this is only like probably foot viz uh, but fish have such keen ability in their lateral line to feel movement through the water column so it's just something very subtle and this time of the year it's like you're gonna get some fish that are riled up of course like that one on the surface that busted on my jerk bait but you're also gonna get some bass that are just down there really in a negative mood they're not gonna eat they're not hungry but if you give them a freaking meal and you put it right in front of their face chances are they might open up so just keep that in mind. This is a pretty awesome way to fish and catch bass when they're deep and lethargic. Pretty hard to do this, obviously, just blind casting, but you can definitely make it work. It's uh, it's super, super, super effective with these uh, these wintertime bass, no doubt. Oh, that's a, that's a big one. That's a big one. That is not a crappie. That's a nice bass. This is a good bass. This is a good bass. Come here, stay down, old girl. Good large mouth. Good large mouth. Oh, he ain't that big. He's just pulling like a hell of a girl. Whew, another one for the swim jig, baby. We'll take it. Quality fish. That was probably close to four. Solid bass, man. I'm making my way up a creek right now but trying to slow down to the mouth of it mainly because it's i think it's a little too early for them to be up up way back in there there probably is some but i think there's gonna be a lot that are but there's probably gonna be a lot staging right before the creek and that's why i'm fishing this like 11 to 14 foot range just swimming a little jig quality bass thanks old girl for playing Ooh, nice see ya coming upon the last couple minutes of the fishing session day number day number one is pretty good i feel like i could have done a lot better um but I, you know i caught a lot of fish like i caught a, a good amount of fish i almost said a lot no, definitely didn't set anything on fire today but you know we got a five and a half a couple like threes a four and some other smaller ones and then as like a nice little side dish to all that i caught my biggest crappie ever along with two others that were well over two pounds pretty insane stuff honestly so it's been a good day it's been a, a very challenging but good day and you know i don't know i i wish i'd have fished with the wind a little bit more but you know it's all good like i think i think i, I think i did all right and tomorrow's supposed to be gorgeous i have the opportunity to split get out of here go fish some fresh water or i could build upon what i learned today and then maybe catch them even better tomorrow tomorrow's conditions look really nice sunny calm looks very fishy too i'm i'm leaning more towards staying here just because i've already started something it's nothing in, it's nothing huge but it is a foundation for maybe a, a full-on pattern tomorrow um also too i think these fish should be shallow right the reason why i was out deep is just because i wanted to kind of see what's out here like big fish generally hang out deep especially in the pre-spawn so you know normally i'd be up on the bank fishing cypress trees fishing the rock fishing docks you know shaded timber things like that but you know it's it's one of those deals where i've got a lot of confidence being out here and it worked out like you know i i don't think i saw anything really huge today but you know i definitely saw a couple fish that were maybe eight eight or nine pounds i don't think i saw anything over double digit status but like maybe like a couple eights or something like that but like i said it's a nice start you know we'll take it we're gonna finish up fishing this dam over here and then we're gonna head back to the airbnb see what milo and kaylee are up to and just wind down with maybe a burger some steaks nice cold beer what more could you ask for this is this is the life dude this is why we came out to east texas is because it's just a fun place to be it's quiet it's peaceful you're in the middle of nowhere there's bass it's enough that you guys get the point I've, I've already exceeded my monologue let's see if we can yonk one more though yonk Hey. Welcome to our humble abode. 
No. No. Y'all are bad. Oh, there hers is! Hi! Walk to daddy. See, I've been walking all day long. <laughs> it's a big baby. See, I've been walking all day long. Walk to daddy. Really? Can I help you? <laughs> Don't eat him. <laughs> Don't eat him. Don't eat him. What? Come on, baby Zan. Oh, no. Hers has got egg on baby's head. Giggle, giggle, giggle. Did you and mommy have fun today? Did you catch any big bass while I was gone? You got any spots for me, Marla? You got any waypoints, little one? Point. Wait, is that point? Point. Marla, point. <laughs> Say thanks for watching, wieners. Say thanks for watching, wieners. We'll catch you tomorrow. Hit the camera. <laughs> Time for a nap. Time for a haircut. Do it, girl. Jeez.